Hello, lovely people. Thank you so much for pressing play. Thank you for joining me for another video. I truly appreciate your support. I appreciate those of you who are standing up and sharing the messages of narcissistic abuse, not just from this channel, but any channel, and even the messages that you create yourself. Um, this is a big deal, you guys. We together are breaking the silence. We're breaking the cycle. We're breaking generational curses. The only way to do that is to no longer continue to betray ourselves and betray other people through breaking the silence, through speaking up, through standing up. In some way, leaning on the wisdom of God, we've got to expose narcissists and narcissistic abuse. I thank you for those of you who are doing that. Sometimes it's sharing posts on social media. You know, some of you need to go to the police and say something about the things that happen. Yeah, some of you need to, you know, talk to your counselors. Some of you need to tell your children the absolute truth. You know, family members. In, in whatever way you feel it, God has laid on your heart to expose, do it. It's important. This, the games that we've played with them, we've got to end them. These people are running amok over society. They are like bed bugs. Seriously. It's hard to get rid of them once they get in your home. Once they come in your home, it's hard to get rid of those things. I've never had bed bugs before, but... <laughs> I've read about it. And they are very invasive. They don't die. They multiply quickly. And that's how the sociopath is. Once they get into a leadership position, they can fill up an entire organization with, the, with those same body snatching, soul snatching creatures. Hear me out. Take a look at society and look at what's happening in the organization where you work? Is there a sociopath in leadership? Look at the church. Is there a sociopath in leadership? If so, I can guarantee you the leaders surrounding that person are also sociopaths. Unless it's someone who is asleep that they can use as a pawn and you'll see them all using that person and sucking that person dry. They'll have that person working like a mule. Anyway, I got off on a tangent. Today's message is about love. Can a narcissist love? Woo! Let's start with God's word. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8. We need to know what is the blueprint of love. We can't talk about it unless we know what God says about love. It says, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. Wow. We can look at this blueprint. We can look at God's word and self-reflect. That's where we should start. Do I show love to others? This is how I look at the scripture first. Let me make sure this applies to my life. And in areas where I'm not showing God's characteristics for love, am I open to the change? Am I being patient? Am I being kind towards others? You know, we can look at our lives, our own lives, and see where we do not show love to other people. So it's important that first we look within. We cannot take the plank out of someone else's eye if we don't first work on ourselves. And so Self-work, self-love, self-care, 
those things are important before moving forward and really identifying the things um, that were wrong in the relationships that you had. Okay. We have to take responsibility for our part first. And that's just the God to honest truth. But let's move on to examine relationships with narcissistic people. Starting with patients. Are they a patient people? Well, I know that we're all saying no as I ask that question. Absolutely not. Now, we ourselves have been impatient before. But here's the difference. Narcissistic people are never open to being patient. There's not there's no love in their impatience or if they are showing patience it's a mockery because it's only to get something you and i are open to allowing god to work patience in us every day it's a work because sometimes we need god to do things for us right now and we act out impatiently and we make wrong choices but we are his children and so we are open to being corrected and to change narcissistic people are not because Patience does not come from their heart. God looks at our heart. So in our hearts, we're willing. They are not. There's darkness there and there's light within you. Love is kind. Are they kind? They are not kind at all. And I know a lot of people say, well, everyone likes them in the community. You know, they're in the church. Um, They run this organization. They're doing a great job. It seems like they're just moving up and up and up. When they get in certain positions, they start to bring in other sociopaths. Remember the movie Body Snatchers? I've referred to this movie several times. They sought, in Body Snatchers, they sought leadership positions so they could bring other Body Snatchers in. It was easier that way. Narcissists are on assignment through Satan. They are the children of Satan. And so they are just carrying out Satan's schemes. What is what is the scheme of Satan? The ultimate scheme is to steal, kill, and destroy by any means necessary. And so narcissists are not kind, and you've seen them treat people around them in a very unkind manner. And you wonder how these people are saying that, oh, they're nice, they're this and they're that, because the narcissist is the lead demon, in my opinion, over those people. But usually those people are, there's one of two types of people that are surrounded by them that help with the illusion that they're the most like person in the room. And that is someone who is asleep, who has an identity crisis, like you and I once were, or another sociopath. Those are the two types of people surrounded by them to help support their illusion, especially the higher up a narcissist goes. And so you're thinking that all the community loves them and, you know, they feel this way. No, they are strategically positioned to make you feel that way. You are God's chosen. And so as God's chosen, the enemy is going to fight you. They're going to fight against what the enemy is going to fight against what you're seeing. That's why it's important to cling to God and to become stronger in your understanding to lack to not lack knowledge in any way. Ask God for his understanding. Ask him for wisdom. Because you think that narcissists are kind and people are thinking this about them and going against you. Those people are strategically placed to make you feel that way. They are not kind. I remember the ex-sociopath. When I first met him, I was like, gosh, he's rude. He was rude to his friends. He's rude to people in public. He's just rude. And I'm just like, why is he so rude? He was even rude and aggressive with my children. And I didn't like that. I did not want that behavior to rub off on them at all. I remember pointing it out um, one day, like, you know, I wish he wouldn't do that. And I kind of said it under my breath. And one of his sisters heard me and she was like, don't let him do those things to your children. I I believe she's probably the scapegoat because I saw him punch her like a man in her arm. And he was like, oh, that's the way we play. And I was like, we're 40, you know, you know, almost 40. I've never seen 40 year old people play that way. But anyway, she warned me, don't let him 
rub off on your kids. If you have boundaries, you need to stick to them. And she said it very quietly and very straightforward. So they are not kind ever. It does not envy. Well, we know that narcissists always want what they can't have. And some of us, again, we behave this way, not intentionally. They are very intentional with their behavior. But sometimes we display that same behavior, which causes confusion for people who are really far out on the outside looking in. That's why it's important to stick to God's word and follow it. Narcissists are jealous of everyone around them, even, un even other narcissistic people. They want what others have. They want what they don't have. They want it all. It does not boast and it is not proud. Well, I don't think I need to say anything about that. They do exactly that. So, so far, we don't know a narcissist who displays any of these qualities whatsoever. They Are they loving people? Do they love you? Can they love? My answer is no. And according to God's word, it's absolutely not. <clears throat> they boast about everything. I mean, it can be the smallest thing where you're looking at them like, okay, well, you know, that's not normal. People don't really brag about that. I mean, we shouldn't brag at all, but I mean, that's not really an accomplishment, but okay. Um, but they're going to boast about it and they're going to find people who don't have whatever it is that they have and stomp on them. They're very prideful people. I've shared the example of the ex sociopath and how he first, he owned his first home in 2013. So that meant most of his life or most of his adult life, he was a renter. But now because he owned a home, he wanted to trample upon renters. And so he attacked all of the renters in his community, saying that they renters move in and destroy the neighborhood and bring the value down. And I was, you know, some of these people kept their homes. They had been there renting that home for years and they were lovely homes and um, taking care of their home better than his. And, you know, he has stuff hanging off his house, shrubs growing as tall as the house, um, you know, grass unkept and, you know, just oil slicks in the driveway. But and they didn't have those things as renters. But for some reason, he found that one thing to be prideful about because they do always. And so renters are going to be where who he attacked because he was now a homeowner and he could be boastful about that. They are always boastful and prideful about something. They're always lurking about seeking whom they may devour. It does not dishonor others. Well, what happens with in the, within the narcissistic abuse cycle? We're devalued. They devalue people around them 24 seven. They devalue you when you first meet them because they are lying. That is dishonoring other people. When you start with a lie, all of them do. They are all liars. And so this is dishonoring to other people. And it is only because they are seeking something for themselves. Moving on into self-seeking. They're seeking something for themselves. They're doing all of these things, they're, but they're masking it, making a mockery of God's word because they have no intention on doing good. In their heart is only darkness. And they're doing it because they want something from you. And really what that is ultimately is your soul. We talk about them wanting money and, you know, different things from people, but it, that's, that's not really what it is. They want to take your soul. They would like for you to take your own life. And that's the ultimate sacrifice to them. That's really what they like for people to do. Drive you absolutely insane and take over. It's not easily angered. Do I need to explain that? Narcissistic rage. They are always angry. They live in a, an angry bubble. Always angry. I've never met one who's not angry or extremely aggressive. Never met one. It like pours. It comes out of their pores, should I say. And the more self-aware you become and the closer to God you become, you can feel it. It's like burning hot 
around them. They're angry constantly. It's like when I'm around narcissistic people, I can hear like this heavy demonic breathing sound. Um, they're con- they're like <laughs> a bull kept behind a gate. And if you open that gate, they're going to come and they're going to tear everything up in its path. They are always angry. Keeps no record of wrongs. Well, narcissistic people are accusers of the brethren, just like their father, Satan. They will reach back into your childhood. If they could get you to take responsibility for something you did when you were two, they would do that. Whatever you tell them, they are going to use it against you. So many of you poured your hearts out to them. Let them know your deepest secrets. What happened to you when you were a child? Some of you were molested. And what did they do? Because I shared this with the ex-sociopath, some things that happened to me, um, you know, in my past. And what ended up happening? I was raped by this person, forced to do something against my will centered around sex, because this is what they do. They keep record of wrongs so they can use it against you. They can hurt you in the same way and then accuse you of being responsible for what happened to you. When you are in an argument with them, they will deflect with something you've done in the past to get the attention off of them. They keep records of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. There's nothing more evil than wearing a mask of to be someone you're not in a way to trick someone else because we all wear masks masks to pretend we're happy when we are very sad so that we don't bring others down you know that's still wearing a mask because it's not really how you feel but it's not intentional and narcissists are intentionally evil and they hate the truth the truth is like pouring water on the wicked witch it fries the narcissist and this is why Silence is important to them. This is why they use fear to come at you, to keep you silent, to make you feel like they're going to do something to you. When many of them really won't, they're not going to touch you physically. They don't want to be in jail. They don't want to be exposed. And so a lot of them will back off when you start talking. And when you start talking, it shines the light. They're not going to step into the light. Okay. They're not going to step into the light. So silence helps to keep the darkness ruminating. The narcissist hates the truth. So delight in the truth, my friends. Tell the truth. Shine the light on the darkness. Expose the wickedness. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. A a relationship with a narcissist is a relationship where you feel the most unprotected. Now they'll pretend the ex sociopath, you know, he wanted to pretend he wanted to get a dog for me. I, I think that's his thing. Cause he got a dog for his ex wife. And he, you know, you know, he told me he got a dog for her to protect her. Well, he wanted to get me this big mastiff dog to protect me. And a mastiff seems to be the thing. I I don't know why he's, they're stuck on the same thing. They're going to repeat the same thing over and over from relationship to relationship. (laughs) They're not going to change. It's the same pattern. So he wanted to get me this mastiff to protect me. But really what I found out later, I'm glad I didn't because I have a smaller kid and I'm not really into big aggressive dogs. And a mastiff is a dog that doesn't belong in my backyard. Um, If I was in the country on Anchorage, absolutely. And so that was what we had talked about, the safety of the acreage. And, you know, he told me about his grandfather having this dog, this type of dog and, you know, so on and so forth. And so I didn't want the big dog. I think that made him angry because he has a certain pattern of behavior that he repeats. And the ex-wife told me that, you know, one of the dogs that they had, the massive dogs, Loved the the family more than him, didn't really like him. So he killed the dog in front of them, right? They do not intend to protect you. They will pretend like it. But when you are really in need and in danger, like when I was stranded on the highway or stranded at the gas station or in need of someone to help me move, the person who said they love me, 
there was no protection available from him. But I was always protecting him in some way. So it's a relationship where you feel absolutely unprotected. You feel vulnerable. You feel open wide to anything. They will let anyone say anything about you and they will repeat it to you. Oh, my friend said this and that. And sometimes their friends didn't even say anything. They just triangulate you with them. And so they'll, you know, they want you to feel as unsafe as possible because then you walk on eggshells, fear kicks in, you're afraid to lose that relationship, you're confused, and they can just, you know, run all over your life. Take advantage of every single moment until they are able to grab your soul and take it out. Always trust, always hopes, always perseveres. As I said, they don't do any of that. They are not hopeful. They are thieves. Thieves don't hope for anything. They just take it. They do not trust anyone. They don't even know what that is. They are, they move on assignment. They trust Satan. They think that Satan has the plan. They do what they're told, like the mules that they are for Satan. And that's what happens. That's just what they do. Perseveres? Absolutely not. Because perseverance requires patience. So we can throw that out too. Love never fails. In other words, love is perfect. It is perfect even in all of its mistakes. Because again, God looks at the heart. Love doesn't want to fail. Love wants to make everyone feel wanted and respected and cared for. So even if we miss some of these, we go back and we correct ourselves. We apologize. We let people know that we care about them, that we're here for them. That is love. Allowing God to move in our hearts God looks at the heart, the heart of a man, as I've said several times already. He's looking at your heart. Is there love in your heart? That's question number one. And then responding to the question, can a narcissist love? Well, they don't do any of these things. They are the most unloving creatures on this earth. You're more likely to get love out of a hermit crab than you are from a narcissist. I know that was random, but there you go. So I hope that this message was helpful. Um, the next message I'm going to share um, later on, maybe the next couple videos, is about what God detests and how narcissists do exactly everything on that list. And I think I may have made a video about that before, but I'm going to go into it again because some of these things we just can't say enough. So did the narcissist love you? Can they love? The answer is no. It's flat out no. Please share your comments, what you think, what you know. Share any scriptures I may have not shared here because, of course, I just focused on this one scripture. But there are so many other scriptures in the Bible that give you a perspective on narcissism and what love is and what love is not. So please share those scriptures below. Thank you for sharing your wisdom with us. God bless you all. Take good care of yourselves and have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.